Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're going to be talking about a massive storm system with 70 plus mile per hour winds and tornadoes, including a flash flooding threat and heavy snow. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. We got a lot to talk about, so let's delve into the details. We got a powerful jet stream dipping down into our western areas. That's bringing some colder conditions out here off the west coast, but it's pummeling the atmospheric river and bringing some heavier rains into central California and including getting into the action on Southern California today. But man, some impressive snowfall rates up here into the higher elevations of five inches per hour right now, up here into a 6,000 feet or higher. That's going to bring a heavy wind threat for a good chunk of the country, including some tornadoes. And then we also have got a, a flash flooding threat to deal with as well with some heavy snow. So let's take a look at the overall hazard map this morning. Man, this is a busy map, guys. Let's highlight the western areas first where we've got those flash flood watches. That's rare to see down here in Southern California, they desperately need the rain and they're gonna get it in a big way today with some heavy rainfall moving in. But man, in the higher elevations, we've got those snowfall rates just cranking out here in the Western areas and that will just intensify. And all these areas in the brown here, those are all high wind watches and warnings as this powerful system will move across and tap into the warm sector and we've got high wind advisories from amarillo texas all the way to iowa including even portions of wisconsin where some of these areas could be packing 60 70 upwards to 80 mile per hour wind gust coming up over the next two days so definitely be on high alert as we take a look at the overall a map this morning you can see the all the rain that's in, going to be inundated uh parts of california here and getting into southern california that is a welcome sight to see unfortunately it's going to come in fast and furious so they can't really handle that much rain at any given time so they are going to have some flash flood watches in a place and for that region but all these darker blues here that's the indication of some very heavy snow over the uh, the mountain ranges here going into Nevada as well as uh, Idaho here and, and portions of Montana. And I'm going to point out this little feature right here. That's some drizzle, right? So that's some like some drizzle, some increased water vapor in the atmosphere. That's an indication that things are kind of turning around from being primarily pretty dry and going to start moistening up the atmosphere and things are going to be starting to change in a big way so let's take a look at the overall sea surface temperatures out here in the tropics i mean hurricane season is done right but the problem is with these storm systems that's come across with these troughs look what, what it's got to tap into it's got well above average sea surface anomalies all the way into the gulf of mexico and the caribbean and but the highest sea surface temperature anomalies are right along the coastline Right, so this is right along the coastline. So as this taps into, as the south winds start to increase, that's just pulling in the water vapor, increasing the dew points, and then lifting it further and further north. And then as these systems come across, you can see this powerful trough that showed you this morning that's off the west coast. That's gonna be over the Four Corners regions, and it's gonna be moving quick. You can almost see that indication in the buckle and the cold front here with snow on the back side and on the on the on the right side you've got the dry line where it's been in, incredibly dry in the texas panhandle and the good chunk of say places like denver right and kansas has been incredibly dry in this area well at ahead of it you got the warm sector right so you got the south winds look at the warm front lifting all the way up into Idaho, iowa that's in the morning time but that just it go, it elevates further north as we get into the afternoon and notice the dry line here it's essentially across nebraska here and anything lying west or lying east of the dry line that's an indication where things are going to start to explode as we get into wednesday afternoon so let's take a look 
at the over the morning low temperatures. These are minimum temperature guys on December the 15th at 7 a.m. We're talking mid 60s, mid 60s for much of Texas, Oklahoma, get it into 60s in Arkansas, Missouri, uh, Kansas, even, you know, going into Nebraska, even into Iowa, talking 50 degrees, even the 19 degrees and in, in North Dakota is still above average. Let me just give you an idea of what we're working with of what we would normally be at this time of year. 37 in Dallas, right? We're 66 degrees. 20s in Oklahoma, we're widespread 60s. Iowa, we're supposed to be in the teens this time of year. We're gonna be 50 degrees, right? So the atmosphere doesn't have time. This time of year, it's not gonna cool down, right? At night, it's not gonna cool down. So you have that increased water vapor, you've got the increased dew points, and then you got a, you got a western trough that's gonna be digging in, pulling in that colder air at the mid latitudes. Well, what do you think is gonna happen? That's not normal, guys. 30 degrees above average, that's gonna make the clash and that's gonna set the stage for some supercell thunderstorms. And then, and unfortunately, uh, areas are gonna be picking up some very high winds and some tornadoes along with it. But out ahead of it, we got that extremely dry air, right? Along the dry line and the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted an elevated risk for fire danger coming up on December, you know, the 15th here, anywhere from Clovis, New Mexico, to Las Vegas, New Mexico, all the way up nearly to Lincoln, Nebraska, right? And so that's a huge chunk where they could be seeing a very elevated fire danger, but even a critical fire danger going into Dalhart, going into, uh, you know, places into, and to Colby here, but even an extremely critical fire danger in places into Kansas, Liberal Kansas, Garden City, Kansas, Dodge City, Kansas. So right along that dry line where you've got those increased, um, you know, just, just very dry air mass, it's going to be very easy to set a fire in this, this neck of the woods. So this is an extremely elevated risk for an, a critical fire danger coming up on Wednesday afternoon ahead of the system. So look where the storms start to explode, like I told you, east of the dry line, right here into eastern portions of Nebraska here, awaiting for that cold front out in the warm sector. You're gonna have thunderstorms explode coming up on 22Z, that's four o'clock in the afternoon, right? So check this out. So as we move through, this is eight o'clock guys, zero two zero, that is eight o'clock. So you're talking, it could potentially move across the whole entire state of Iowa from eight, from four o'clock in the afternoon to eight o'clock at night. Now I looked at Iowa, we're talking 310 miles wide. So these storms have a potential to moving at 80 miles an hour. So you're gonna have little to no warning for be prepared. So you need to be in high alert in Iowa from four o'clock to eight o'clock on Wednesday afternoon at these storms are be coming in with a vengeance. Now this is what I'm concerned about. Let's take a look at the extreme forecast index for the Cape values for this for this time of year. And when you start getting in values up here into the 0.95 or 1.0, that is kind of rare territory, guys. I mean, these were hitting these areas down here where they had the tornado outbreak. So this is what I'm concerned about. We're talking about an extreme risk for elevated, an extreme event coming up with the combination of those damaging winds and some tornadoes with these storms moving at 80 miles an hour, right? So you got to factor all that in. So you're gonna have little tonal warning with this with these particular system. And look at some of the wind gusts, right? I mean, some of the wind gusts, we've got those high wind watches and warnings. We go right along that dry line where st their storms start to explode here into uh, uh, eastern Nebraska here, some 70 mile per hour wind gust. They start really get cranking over the entire state of Iowa from 60 to 70 miles an hour, upwards to 80 miles an hour. You combine that with these storms moving at 80 miles an hour. 
these storms are going to be feeling like they're going to have 100 mile per hour winds with them over the state of Iowa. Now, it's not going to be classified as like a, a, a duratio. It doesn't have that type of setup. But it's almost going to feel like a duratio that's going to be coming across on Wednesday afternoon because the all the dynamics are in place here. We're talking a potentially extreme event happening over the state of Iowa, and that will just can, go into southern parts of Minnesota here going into uh, Wisconsin as you're getting it into the day into the uh, nighttime hours on Wednesday, going into Thursday morning. And the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted this area. We talked about this area yesterday, even before they're putting the slight risk out this morning. So the dynamics have been in place already, and it looks almost just to keeps intensifying as we're getting more data that comes in. And unfortunately, that's what was happening with the tornado setup that was setting up over that took place. So this is going to be a very damaging wind threat with some tornadoes coming up on Wednesday afternoon into the Iowa area in eastern Nebraska through Iowa going into southern Minnesota and to going into Wisconsin. So definitely be on the lookout and be on a high alert. If we take a look at the significant tornado parameter index, there wasn't much even there yesterday. So we keep on getting some elevated values right along the 850 millibar, right along where this little couplet's gonna be along this dry line. So you can almost see if we look at the 850 millibar, man, look at that. That is a huge swath of shear coming across the entire state here. And this little, you know, wide area, that's an indication where the 850 low is, right? So that's going to be right here, right along this couplet. We could be looking at some tornadoes outbreaking with a damaging wind threat through the south side and on the north side. That's the deformation line, and that's going to be your heavy snow with the cold air coming in on the back side. So you can actually take a look at the 3K kilometer NAM model with this very dynamic system coming through. That's at 2Z. That's at 8 o'clock in, in, the, in the evening now on, on Wednesday with kind of this fishtail on the backside. Look at the radar. It almost looks like some ribs, right? That's an indication that these things are going to be booking quick and it's separated so that so you can actually see on the back side with with that heavy snow right on the north side of that where that 850 low is that's where you're going to be seeing some of the heavier snow and out ahead of it there's the warm sector where you're going to be getting those damaging winds and those isolated tornadoes coming up on Wednesday afternoon, because this just continues to move further into further northeast, going into the state of Wisconsin, getting into portions of the Upper Peninsula here, and it tails back across. So you're going to see an isolated threat, severe threat coming on the coming on the backside as this kind of tails across, tapping into that warm sector. As we transfer getting into that Thursday time frame, this is into the overnight hours going into the morning hours. As we get into Thursday morning, we could be seeing a solid squall line, kind of, kind of a mini squall line coming through with some damaging winds along with it of anywhere from you know Indiana to Southern Illinois to Southern Missouri, going into Central uh, Arkansas, getting into portions of uh, East Texas as kind of a, a, a mini squall line kind of moving through into the morning hours. And the Storm Prediction Center has already highlighted some elevated uh, severe storms going into that region from essentially from East Texas to Little Rock, Arkansas to Memphis, Tennessee. And that'll be on the day on uh, on Thursday as this dynamic system continues to move across. Now, the problem is we're gonna have two cold fronts, right? So we're gonna have two cold fronts. That first one moves through, doesn't have really much warm cold air with it, but it backs up as a warm front. And that's an indication of, you can actually see that right here when it backs up, it's pulling in some of that increased water vapor, right? From, the, from those increased sea surface temperatures that's gonna create a heavy rain setup. Unfortunately, in a lot of the tornado prone areas that get, get hit hard with those tornadoes, essentially from East Texas to you know Eastern, Eastern Oklahoma here, going into Central and Northern Arkansas, Southern, Southeastern Missouri, Western Kentucky, Western T Tennessee, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana. A lot of these same areas are gonna get hard with some heavy rain 
coming up on the day on Friday. But as this continues to push through, that second reinforcing shot of colder air pushes it a little bit further south, but we could be looking at a chilly rain coming up on the day on Saturday, Saturday going into a good chunk of Texas, a good chunk of Louisiana, into Arkansas, going into, you know, portions of Mississippi and Alabama and Tennessee, all those areas will still be under the gun with some, some heavier rains. But look what the freeze line is, right? Look at the freeze line, it's well to the north. So these lows, are, these high temperatures are gonna be in the 40s in Texas, but they're not gonna drop much overnight. So they're still probably gonna be in the 40s going in on Saturday. So there's no threat of uh, ice or snow or anything like that in Texas. I mean, the, the extreme portions of the higher elevations up here in the mountains, maybe you might see a snowflake or a seat, seat plot or two, but that's about it. I mean, it's these temperatures are gonna be plenty warm at night you're not going to be dropping that much but chilly during the day no question in the 40s uh in in the day but as we move through on sunday there could be enough colder air now well we could be a transfer into some snow it's a long ways off this is right on the borderline i'm not buying this as of yet but this is just some of the models what it's indicating currently right now i don't really i don't actually think this is going to come to fruition but right now it's actually showing a little bit of snow uh, up here into the northeast uh, coming up on the day on Sunday. But look where the freezing line is. I mean, you're right going to be right on the borderline. But, you know, as we get into Sunday, I think uh, most of this will start be starting to be e eaten away and be mostly rain. But so as we look at the overall rain up prospects between now and Sunday, we're looking at some heavy rain essentially starting from East Texas, uh, you know, S Central Texas, North Texas, East Texas, going into Eastern uh, Oklahoma, Northern portions of Louisiana, especially into Arkansas, the heavy prone areas that get hit with the tornadoes and Western Tennessee, Western Kentucky, Southern. Unfortunately, yes, you got a heavy rain threat coming up really from Thursday, Friday, and it'll start to wind down a little bit on the day on Sunday and be really cleared out by by. Uh, or Saturday by then by Sunday, but look where the dry area is. That's where the critical fire danger is going to be in the midsection of the country. And you got all that heavy rain that's going to be coming in this week off the west coast here into uh, into the mountain ranges and especially into uh, central and uh, southern California, which all those are much needed rains uh, for that region. And look where the rain the rain prospects up to the north, and a lot of that is going to be in the form of snow. I do feel most of this on this particular model. I think South Dakota is going to be picking up more snow than what this actually indicates. North Dakota is and portions of uh, Minnesota here. You can see here where this particular model, yeah, it doesn't even have the snow threat further south. It has it more or less in the upper elevations, and I think that's probably more realistic of what's going to happen with this particular system as it gets into the day on Sunday with mainly a higher elevation event going into upstate New York, uh, Vermont and New Hampshire going into Maine with all the heavy snow of the mountain ranges and great for the ski country out there into our western area. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Definitely stay weather aware. Be prepared for this system that's coming up over the next couple of days. I appreciate you guys watching. Do, do like this video. Definitely subscribe to my channel and catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.